Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Structural Analysis 1. It's an elementary course in the analysis of determinate and indeterminate structures. Uh, I am the TA for this course. Wait one second. Some people are joining. So we'll start now. I'm the TA for this structural analysis one course. I'm Danish Bashi from Structural Engineering Division, Department of Civil Engineering, IIT Madras. So this is the first week of uh, lectures going on uh, on NPTEL website. You must have already gone through the, those lectures. So those lectures are, I think, uh, first two lectures were the introductory lectures. Uh, those were basically about introduction to structural analysis. Uh, major definitions were discussed in those lectures and also uh, the second uh, second or third lecture I guess is about loads, uh, determination of loads on structure. So I will also try to explain some of the basic definitions and uh, also we will do some basic numericals on loads on structures in today's session and as the lectures on the online sessions will uh, go on we will also try to keep track of all those lectures and I will try to uh, show you numericals regarding those lectures only here. So from I think next session we will be do, uh, dealing with purely numerical based problems only. We will not discuss any theory. Maybe in some cases uh, we are, I have to explain any structural analysis method. I will first discuss some theoretical background of that method and later on I will solve a uh, few examples so that it will be easy for you people to understand how to solve those problems and it will be very easy for you for you people to solve the assignments and uh, do good in your exams uh, so in today's uh, lecture uh, we will be uh, discussing introduction to structural analysis why what is basically structural analysis why we actually need structural analysis in structural engineering and what are the steps that we do in structural engineering planning and how structural analysis is helpful in that. Later on, uh, we will also uh, go into the history of structural analysis, how this structural analysis was introduced into scientific uh, scientific, scientific domain, and uh, before structural analysis, how people use it to uh, do the analysis of structures and all. And finally, uh, last, last but not the least, uh, we will see the types of members. Uh, what are the different types of members? Mainly, you people must uh, must be aware with the terms like tension members, compression members, shear members, or uh, we can say that uh, trusses. I will try to explain all of these type of structures because uh, with all these type of structures, they can be determined. And in structural analysis one, we will be dealing with all these type of structures and. Uh, mainly starting from uh, truss, then we will come to the beam, then we will come to portal frame like uh, frame in 1D, 2D, maybe I think uh, in 2D, uh, space uh, frames will not be discussed, I think it's not the part of the syllabus. And then we will uh, come to the uh, methods how to analyze these structures. And beam, beam is one of the most important uh, structural uh, member. So we will start now. Introduction to structural analysis. So what actually is structural analysis? Structural analysis is the prediction of performance of a given structure under pre-described loads or the or other external effects such as support moments and temperature change. change. So what the def definition says is that, for example, we have a structural member. Some people are joining. For example, we have a structural member like this. We have a beam. We have beam member like this. And let's assume that it is simply supported like this. For example, this beam member can be anywhere. This can be a roof beam, this can be a plant beam, or this can be anywhere in the beam. So, uh, for example, or this can be a, a bridge girder. Anything, a beam can be anything. 
okay so for example if the loads are acting like this some arbitrary loading is acting on it point loads or maybe at uh, some span udl is acting like this we are having p1 p2 p3 p4 i hope i am audible to everyone okay uh, and we have uh, w1 uniformly dis- distributed load and we have a span of the beam ab like it is spanned over a length of l so what actually in structural analysis we do is that we have a structural member structural member is given to us and also that loading is precisely defined on it and we actually know the amount of loading that's being acting on our structure so what is the next step is that we have to uh determine the uh, effects that uh, arise in this structure for example uh, the spo- support reaction that get induced for example support reaction r a r b okay to determine these support reactions this is a part of structural analysis r a r b or for example if i cut or if i cut any section mid midway or at any span location in this uh, beam for example i will cut a section i will cut a section here okay for example i cut a section here and i want to determine what are the internal forces here shear force what will be the at any section at any section a okay a dash we have a a dash section okay so what will be the shear force shear force or what will be the bending moment what will be the shear force what will be the bending moment or what will be the uh, stresses as well it may be shear stress or it may be uh, normal stress or bending stress what we call as bending stress so the determination of this these quantities shear stress shear force bending moment or bending stress at any uh, structural location or the support reactions it's a part of the structural analysis or for example if this uh, support sinks by any amount let's not talk about the loading loading is not present there but uh, for example something happened at the support location this member sink by some amount delta so let me draw it uh, differently uh wait a second so this is the structural member for example this went from to this location this is not visible to you people maybe so this went to this location for example this support and this is now at this location it get displaced by amount delta for example okay so because of this uh, support settlement stresses will get induced into this because of the bending moment that will act on this opposite direction because structure has a tendency to get back to its uh, original position to get back to its original position bending moment will be induced at this uh, point, point uh, side a so in order to determine this bending moment due to support settlement mss that can be also the part of the structural analysis or not maybe only uh, uh, this loading for example it may be snow load wind load uh, i am talking about p1 p2 p3 it may be the thermal load for example if this was a steel beam uh, uh, or a steel per- purlin attached at, at any uh, building so for example accidentally that uh, building caught fire okay uh so uh, thermal stresses will get induced in the, into these structures because of that thermal stresses st- uh, structure I mean, these beam members will elongate and they will induce stresses at their 
either at the sp- span and also at the support so to determine the, those uh, stresses those and as well as stress resultant resultant shear pulse and bending moments it's a part of structural analysis hope this is clear to you people loading can be any type it can be of any uh, it can be loading due to earthquake or it can be loading uh, due to wind it can be uh, loading due to snow or it can be uh, live load it can be dead load it can be pedestrian loading in case of bridges it can be vehicular loads in case of uh, bridges so load can be of any type but what happens because of those loads to a structure uh, uh, which includes support uh, reactions or which include the stress resultants like shear force and bending moment to determine all these quantities is a part of structural analysis then coming to the historical background what is the historical background of structural analysis how people used to deal with the problems before the structural analysis was introduced so historical background so uh, what happened in the uh, history how people used to uh, uh, i uh, do uh, the design of the structures without having uh, the knowledge about the structural analysis without uh, knowing if a particular load is acting on a structure what stresses will be developed in our stru- uh, in our uh, structural member because at that time there was no concept of uh, material properties or the concept of the uh, theories that we have like the uh, beam theory we have bernoulli beam theory to motion ko beam theory or we have the laws like hooke's law and any uh, all these things because these things were not developed at that point of time people uh, at that point of time were generally using trial and error methods to uh, do the analysis of their structures and then design them ac- accordingly if we see that uh, the type uh, then structures which were uh, designed in very ancient past or like greek temples or we have uh, uh, cathedrals in uh, rome and uh, around the world uh, those were very ancient structures that were developed without any knowledge of structural analysis okay so we have a uh, big uh, example is egyptian pyramids uh, so these are about Egyptian pyramids were uh, constructing uh, constructed i think near back in 3000 BC okay and another example is the greek temples okay these were constructed somewhere between 5 uh, 500 to 100 BC and uh, uh roman uh, cathedrals and uh, gothic cathedrals were roman or uh, uh gothic cathedrals they were constructed laid back in 1000 to 1500 bc okay so but uh, uh, one thing to important note here that these structures are still standing standing and withstanding the need forces of the nature with standing the uh, all the calamities that have come on this earth they are still standing uh, today and this is a testimony testimonial of ingenuity of their builders okay so then uh, after these uh, we can say that uh, the uh, a uh, pioneer for the uh, development of the structural analysis can be considered as uh, galileo galilei in 1564 to 1664 uh, so uh, he wrote a book two new sciences uh, which was published in 1638 uh, 
in which Galileo analyzed the failure of some uh, multiple structures, in, including cantilever beams. So uh, the record of the uh, structural analysis, I think, starts from Galileo Galilei from 1564. He then solved uh, some some basic problems like cantilever problem because uh, cantilever problem is the one of the basics uh, that has been discussed in the uh, structure structural analysis. So we can consider it as then we uh, first were these were all designed by uh, these were all analyzed by trial and error method okay trial and error method then came the name of great galileo galilei galilei in 1564 to 1642 okay 1642 he wrote a book book namely uh, two new sciences uh, and in those two new sciences he solved uh, um, uh, structural analysis problems like cantilever okay cantilever beams It's the basic about Galileo Galilei. And after Galileo Galilei, uh, we know that Galileo Galilei is uh, a pioneering work, uh, the knowledge of structural mechanics advanced at the rapid pace after this. Okay, So directly after this came the uh, big name Robert Hooke in uh, mechanics of materials is the uh, main name. Robert Hooke after Galileo Galilei, and he came in 1635 to 1703. Okay, 1703. Sorry, 1703, and who developed the law for the linear relationship between the force and deformation, and we all know that law as Hooke's law. Okay, and his work main contribution is Hooke's law. Hooke's law, that's the linear relationship between relation between load and deformation. Load and deformation, that's he put forward load is x proportional to deformation. Okay, this was the linear relationship that he put forward at that time, point of time. And after this, uh, Hook, uh, Robert Hook, and then came the great names like uh, Sir Isaac Newton. And uh, it was in the years between 1642 to 1727, okay? Uh, who he, uh, we know that uh, what happened because of Sir Sa Isaac Newton, it was all because of Sir Sa Isaac Newton laws of motion came into existence and he developed calculus. And I think most of the uh, structural analysis uh, methods later on that we will discuss are mainly de uh, dependent on calculus. So his main contribution was laws of motion. motion and calculus okay after that came john bernoulli john bernoulli came in the years of 1667 it's all chronologically they came 1748 and he put uh, forward the principle of virtual work that we will be studying. Uh, I think it's not my principle of work, work, work is not included in the syllabus of structural analysis one. It is in the structural analysis two, I guess, virtual work, principle of virtual work. So his contribution was principle of virtual work. Virtual work.
so after uh, this came the uh, famous name of uh, leonard uh, euler okay so we have after this we have euler he came in years 1707 1707 to 1783 and his contribution was uh, the theory of buckling of columns we uh, you all, all have studied in mechanics of materials i think uh, euler buckling law uh, and that theory was put forward by euler himself okay bug theory of buckling of columns columns and then came coulomb he came in the year 1736 to 1806 now we entered 18th century presented the bending of elastic beams after that we have uh, the contribution from navier and uh, he published uh, several uh, papers on the behavior of structures which considered his first te- textbook in the modern theory of st- strength of materials so navier's contribution is and he came in the year 1785 to 1863 and his contribution is modern theory of strength of materials okay more modern theory of strength of materials okay then we have the famous names that well known names that will come in our structural analysis one are uh, clapeyron we have a clapeyron uh, no i think it's a structural analysis to three moment equation cross clapeyron three moment equations okay then we have jc maxwell who presented the famous method of consistent deformations and the law of reciprocal deflection okay these two people is first is clapeyron b p clapeyron and he came in the year 1799 to 1864 and his main contribution is three moment equation okay then came the famous jc maxwell and it was in the year 1831 to 1879 we have mm, he put forward the method of consistent deformations very famous method in the analysis of indeterminate structures method of consistent deformations deformations and also law of uh, reciprocal deflections like a deflection after this maxwell we have uh, otto bohr mohr sorry and he came 1835 to 1918 and he put a uh, forward the conjugate wave method conjugate ma- method and also mohr circle very famous okay you will you use the same stress analysis then we have other contributions like uh, we will study one theorem that is known as castiglione's theorem he came in 1847 sorry 
seven to eighteen eighty four formulated the theorem of the least work. Okay, then we have Greeny. Uh, he came in the years eighteen forty two to nineteen hundred three. He developed the moment area method. He it's a very famous method. Okay, then we have Muller Breslau. He came in the years nineteen fifty one to nineteen twenty five. Who presented the principle of constructing influence line diagrams both for determinate structures and indeterminate structures. We will be studying in this course. Influence line diagrams for the determinate structures, and that uh, with the help of uh, Muller-Breslau principle, it's a very beautiful principle. And came the main uh, uh, works of many uh, like slope deflection method uh, and the matrix uh, stiffness method. We have Hardy Cross who put forward the moment distribution method in 1924, one of the famous structural analysis method till date, and it's still being used. And in fact, it was most widely used between used between 1930 to 1917, and it contributed significantly to the uh, understanding of the behavior of structures, which were uh, statically indeterminate. Okay. Then, after 1950s, the whole world was revolutionized by the uh, advent of the availability of the computers. So all the uh, this hand calculations were shifted to the computers, and there were many names who uh, developed the computer programs uh, for the easy analysis of. Uh, structure so uh, directly jump from 18 uh, 1980 to 1950 onwards okay we have computer programs programs for structural analysis okay so it was the full history of structural analysis how it developed from the trial and error method to the present uh, how it's running uh, um, with the help of computer programs okay then we have another topic in this is what is the role of structural analysis in structural engineering so what actually is structural engineering structural engineering is the science and art of planning designing and constructing safe and economical structures that will serve the intended purpose okay uh, so there are different phases in structural engineering that, uh, those are planning phase then there is uh, wait so there are there is planning phase there is preliminary structural design there is the estimation of loads from estimation of loads we do the structural analysis of our structure as i already mentioned so after this structural analysis there is a check are the uh, safety and serviceability requirements satisfied that is whether the uh, after analysis the uh, stress resultants that we got are they within the limit of the capability of our structure if they are within the limit of, of our structure then we will uh, proceed to construction phase for example if we got the stresses that are being developed because of the incoming loads on our structure and those are beyond the strength of our structural member then we say a big no to that structural de design and we say that please revise the structural design and go again to the estimation of loads then again to structural analysis and revise the structural design okay then again check if the loads are uh, if the stress uh, our stress resistance resultants are within the Uh, limits or they are below the uh, strength of our material and we proceed to construction phase these are the uh, phases of our structural engineering so i will uh, briefly explain the uh, phases one by one in planning phase but uh, in, uh, in planning phase what actually we do is that uh, planning phase usually involves the establishment of the functional requirements of the proposed structure okay uh, the general layout and the dimension of the structure Consider consideration of the possible type of structures for example uh, whether in the planning phase uh, for example uh, as some client told we have to uh, make a building so uh, uh, in the planning phase we will decide whether we will make this uh, building as a, a moment resistant frame uh, uh, in a, uh, reinforced concrete or we will make it by steel type of uh, material uh, using the, either we will make a rigid frame or a truss structure so in planning phase we decide these preliminary things what type of structure uh, uh, what type of structure material will be used and what type of structure it will be either it will be rigid frame or truss or that may be feasible and the types of materials also that i also already told you uh, and this phase also involves the consideration of the uh, non structural factors such as uh, in planning phase we uh, think about the aesthetics how the uh, our building finally is going to look like 
and the environmental impact as well of the structure on the surroundings as well these are the basic things that we decide in the planning phase so in planning phase i will again repeat is that we decide uh, what type of material we will use we will use we will use wood we will use steel we will use uh, reinforced concrete or any type of material what we are going to use with which we will construct our structure then uh, what i uh, what type of method uh, methodology we will use or like uh, what type of structure it will be maybe it will be a moment resisting frame like we have columns beams slabs all the things or it will be a stress stress type structure where all the loads will be transferred to be using uh, tension and compression all only so this uh, we do in and also aesthetics are also decided in planning phase then in second step that is a preliminary structural design in preliminary structural design what we do is the sizes of the various members of the structural system uh, selected in the planning phase are estimated based on the approximate analysis past experience and code requirements what we do in preliminary structural design is that we will open our code books we will see what would be the a uh, feasible length will be what will be the uh, feasible height of a column or what will be the feasible uh, cross section column plant beam or what will be the uh, total area on which that we will be occupied for a building we have to see all the uh, things now we have to maintain the uh, proper gap from all the boundaries uh, from the property line these all things we have to see in the preliminary structural design uh it also includes the selection of the dimensions and these dimensions are usually selected we have a very uh, in structural engineering team there are a lot bunch of uh, experienced people there they uh, tell from their past experience what can be the uh, good uh, uh, structural uh, size of this member uh, for example uh, they know if uh, we are uh, trying to make any big hall they know what should be the capacity of that uh, what should be the area of that hall what should be the full over height what uh, what should be the opening for the windows of, uh, that will look, that will finally look aesthetically good when the building will be finally constructed these all things will be are discussed in preliminary structural design after that when the dimensions are selected and also uh, everything is uh, predefined then uh, comes to the estimation of the loads uh, after this uh, we see what are the total loads that are uh, getting involved on our structure for example we estimate the total dead load of our structure we uh, estimate the total wind load that will be experienced by the structure okay then after comes the main thing the main part of the story is the structural analysis okay this thing comes the structural analysis as i already explained structural analysis just we are we are having some loads to find on our structure structural analysis contains those tools which helps us to determine the uh, reactions which helps us to determine the stress resultants like bending moment and shear force because when we will determine those bending moments and shear force we will then compare it with the members capacity what bending moment or shear force this member is able to resist if it is well below the capacity then we will say okay to the design start the construction process and if it is well above the uh, limit of our capacity of our uh, structural member we will say no please revise the st uh, structural design and again go to the estimation of loads do the structural analysis again and bring all these stress resultants within the limit of the capacity of our structure then we will allow you to go to the construction phase okay we will call this process as revised structural design we tell that no it's a red flag here you we will not allow you to do the construction just go back to the estimation of loads do the structural analysis again and see whether the, this is uh, satisfying the uh, serviceability criteria uh, these are these are the criteria you must have studied in the enforced concrete design uh, limit state and serviceability okay so if it is satisfying that then uh, we will say okay yes start the construction so this is all about structural engineering and all the phases in the structural engineering and how structural analysis plays an important role in the structural engineering
then comes the classification of the uh, structures we have uh, so we have a lot of uh, structures that act differently depending upon uh, how they are being constructed and how the loads loads are being transmitted and then uh, transmitted and transferred from, from one member member to another member and then eventually to uh, ground uh, and on the basis of this classification we have different types of structures the first structure that i am going to discuss are uh, ten tension structures okay tension structures are the members of uh, the members of the tension structures are subjected to pure tension okay under the action of external loads because tensile stress is distributed uniformly over the cross sectional areas of members the material of such structure is utilized in most efficient manner okay uh, so uh, what is meant by this statement is that for example we have a axial bar like this and we have a concrete beam like this we have both cases here we have axial bar like this and this is axial load acting on same amount of axial load acting on this p and it is under bending under a load p okay this is simply supported beam want to reconstruct for this and we are just pulling this bar from both sides okay axial bar and this is b this is a tension member okay we know that so what happens in tension member is that when we apply axial load to this if we see the cross sectional area for example if this is a circular bar and i try to see the cross sectional area i will see that this load p is fully distributed fully distributed throughout the cross section and full material strength of this uh cross section is being utilized so in tension members we can use all uh, full strength of the material or we, we can say that uh the material of such structures is used utilized in the most efficient way but if we see same uh, cross section at the beam for example we have a beam we know that this beam will be under tension and compression okay for example this is the neutral axis okay we know that this portion is in compression and this is in tension and uh, when the load loads are acting over it stresses will be developed in this this will be compressive stresses in the above and here will be tensile stresses uh, we are seeing that uh, for example this is a uh, this is a reinforced concrete beam and it's having some uh, reinforced bars uh, at the bottom we know that Uh, the concrete we consider to take the compression is only this part of the uh, material this part of the cross section are you people seeing what i am trying to say is that in uh, bending members or like the beam members whole material is not utilized for taking up the loads for example here only half of the concrete is being utilized to take the loads and the tension part is taken care by uh, this uh, i mean to say that re reinforcing bars re bars okay so these take up the tension so in uh, uh, except uh, tension members all the other members don't use the main material efficiently so here only half of the concrete is being used and this concrete is just serving the purpose of taking uh, keeping the uh, bars intact or keeping the structural integrity they are not using used in, in the transmission of the loads uh, or any other purpose their only purpose that um, concrete below the neutral axis has only the purpose of keeping the bars with the uh, keeping the bars with the beam as a whole okay so in tension members only the material is being used as a whole and in the efficient manner so for example we have a here i have shown some tension members for example uh, this is some link like this and the axial load p is acting on it uh, it will uh, transfer this p load to this axial members like this and uh, we can have links like this so you can see there if load p was acting like downwards and it's transferring the load like this okay or be, uh, these members are in tension and we can say the uh, example of the tension members is like that uh, this one for example we have a cable stayed bridge it's a very uh, common example uh, fa famous example um, of the tension members so we have a main cord cable like this this one okay 
this cable carries uh, loads through tension like this okay there is bending also inside these cables but if i take one of these members hangers those these are known as hangers let me make it with different color if i take one of these members okay this okay like this at the above it's co connected to the main cable and below it it is taking the weight of the deck and the all the things that are coming onto it vehicles pedestrians and everything so it's being acting about by loads like this okay like this and like this so it becomes a tension member pure tension member okay so this was the example of tension members then coming to the second class of uh, structures is <laughs> sorry is the compression members so what happens in compression structure structures is that these develop the compressive st stresses under the action of the external loads so the well known examples of the compression members is a column and arches in columns we know that columns are only made to serve the purpose to take the compression loads in our structure okay in uh, in this way, i have a shown column here it's a, a i section column here or h section column here we have a axial load acting on this column like this okay so it's uh, a whole section is under compression okay uh, in arches uh, this uh, arches also take the load uh, by the action of compression only okay compression members are very simple and mainly we use uh, these n arches and uh, this all uh, columns only then we have a third class of structures is trusses very famous type of structures uh, those are lightweight and the uh, pace of the construction is very fast in it and uh, one, one more thing is that most of the members and uh, this is uh, tension uh, tension members and compression members only so whole material is used in it uh, uh, very uh, as i already mentioned a very uh, rapid construction is in in uh, truss uh, trusses so trusses are composed of straight members connected at their ends by hinged connections to form a stable configuration okay when the loads are applied to a truss at the joints its members either elongate or shorten nothing else happens in a truss either elongate or shorten no bending no shear force nothing else comes into play in truss members okay thus the members are an ideal truss are always either in uniform tension or uniform com compression and i am telling about only the ideal truss in practical situations actually it doesn't happen but uh, designers uh, keep uh, try to keep uh, all the members in pure compression pure compression or pure tension okay so uh, what happens this is these all are these all all joints are hinged connections okay these all joints are hinged connections okay this this these are hinged connections so uh, what happens in this is they you know, try to keep all the members either in tension or in compression okay no bending happens okay this is kept in consideration in truss members the famous examples of the truss structures are the truss bridges very uh, every very few see truss bridges are there okay then we have uh, another class of structures is shear structures uh, in shear structures such as reinforced concrete shear walls uh, which are actually used in multi story buildings uh, to reduce the lateral moment uh, due to weight loads and earthquake excitations 
Shear structures develop mainly in plane shear, which relatively smooth building bending stresses under the action of the external load. So, for example, I will show you where we use these uh, shear structures, like shear walls. Uh, if you people have visited any construction site, there might you have seen uh, the shear walls. For example, we have a this like uh, ground like this. We have. Uh, like it can be anything, plant beam or something. We have two columns like this. We'll make all the things with different colors. For example, we have one column like this. We have another column like this. So there is, and maybe they can be connected with another beam. Okay. They can, they are connected by some, for example, they are connected by some beam at the top, okay? At the top they have this. And let's say this is connected from this side. I will make it like this. And this can be connected because there are columns all around around these columns. So there is a gap uh, between these two columns and there is a rectangular uh, partition in between. So what happens in this is that designers came up with an idea to fill this gap with wall-like structure like this. It's actually a type of wall. Like this, we call this as a shear wall, okay? What happens, uh, how this shear wall is uh, helpful is that, for example, uh, this beam, this is a beam structure. So loads act on this, loads act on this, loads act on this. These are all the gravity loads, will be dead loads, live loads, everything, okay? It takes the loads through bending, okay? Bending action, okay. And we know in column, uh, transmission usually happens through. So, in column, transmission usually happens through co compression, okay. Compression, okay. So, the below side is ground. So, let us take an example. take a scenario that uh, let's take a scenario where wind acts on this structure and when we know that wind load is a lateral load for example wind acts on our structure like this okay to resist these uh, loads wind loads this shear wall, wall comes into play this resists the loads like this. It will tend to move like this at the top and it will tend to move like this at the bottom. There will be a shearing action in the shear wall as we have known uh, from our basic structural me mechanics. For example, we have a structure, uh, for example, we have a block like this. For example, if we have a block like this and shear stresses like act like this on this, it will try to go on like this. It will try to go like this. So there is a shearing action, and shear wall helps in the resist uh, helps in the resistance against these types of uh, loads, which cause shear stress in our structure. Main issue in shear walls, there are bending stresses also, but mainly these uh, walls resist the loads through the action of shear. Uh, these uh, loads can be wind loads and primarily wind loads and earthquake loads, okay? Wind and earthquake loads. So, here, here I have shown in the figure the same thing, how the shear actors on a shear wall, okay? I show you, you, you through a diagram also. 
then comes our the famous structure that we will be studying throughout our structure analysis course one is the bending structure in bending structures actually they develop bending stresses under the action of the external loads in some structures shear stresses will be there as i already mentioned in shear structures bending will be there and in bending structures some shear stresses will be there associated with the change in the bending moments may also be significant and should be considered in their design okay the most commonly used shear bending structures as we know uh, know are beams rigid frames slabs and plates all these uh, structures resist loads through i would say that uh, these are resist loads through uh, band bending and plates uh, and can be classified as bending structures a beam is a straight member that is loaded perpendicular to its longitudinal axis okay there is a definition of a beam uh, so we have like a uh, beam structure like this uh, okay it is a point load p acts on it it will reduce resist the loads for example this will be the deflected shear like it will resist the loads through purely through bending then we have a, a slab uh, slabs like this and slab systems like this so on slab systems like this when uniformly distributed loads act these uh, band like this they usually resist the loads through uh, bending slabs are actually plates uh, they resist the loads through bending only okay so we cover types of structures also so i think uh, almost it's an r so i think i think we should stop now in next lecture we will discuss directly loads on a structure i thought of solving some numericals at the end but we don't have time to solve some numericals from next class uh, this uh, session will be purely based numerical based because this whole course is a numerical based you have to learn the analysis method and then to use those analysis methods on structures to so, uh, solve different things okay so next class we will solve only numericals and also we will discuss a little bit theory today was an introductory class and it was very mandatory to give introduction about uh, structural analysis its importance in structural engineering and its historical background and the types of structures that we will be dealing in structural analysis one mainly we will be concerned with uh, bending structures that is beam and truss structures that is truss members actual bars in structural analysis i think uh, other structures are not included and it's beyond the scope of our current course <coughs> so i think it's all for today if you people have any questions you may ask otherwise we can conclude the session and you people can disperse Sir, is it possible to record your lecture, sir? Yes, sir. Uh, I I have already recorded this lecture and uh, the YouTube. Uh, I will upload the lecture on the YouTube, and that link will be shared with you to so okay. natural people. So okay. don't worry thank about you. that. Thank you. Thank you. And okay. these notes will be also provided to you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Any other question? Sir, there is any prerequisite for the next lecture? Uh, if you people uh, come come up with uh, on yourself, uh, you just read uh, types of loads and the estimation of the loads. Then it will be very uh, uh, easy for you people to understand the numerical that I will be solving. Because this uh, um, course is all about uh, having. Uh, uh the skill of solving uh, problems in structural analysis mm, that's all you are going to learn from this course okay sir okay sir will you discuss the assignment problems after the due date of submission of assignment is over uh, 
Look, uh, I think uh, I saw the assignments. I thought the assignments were very simple, and I will try to discuss the uh, numerical examples very closely related to the assignment problems. But I will not discuss the assignment problems exactly. Uh, those are very simple problems. I will uh, discuss some advanced problems also here. So it will be very useful for you people. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other question? Thank you. 